Fala, galera! Bienvenidos! <laughs> It's gonna be that way. Just yeah. play the music. You finish the podcast. Thanks, guys. That was... Who was here today? I don't know. <laughs> hey, guys, we have a special guest today. Um, he's... A firefighter. <laughs> I think half time. He worked like there part time. A dad full time. Uh, videographer and photographer. <laughs> part time as well. So I don't know where they find time to do everything. Uh, but today we have here Dylan De Haas. I like it. Hey Dylan, how are you? Good man, good yourself? Good, good man. Long time no see you. Long time, long time. I'm so happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you. And I can, I can wait to ask all the yeah. questions. We have like a special questions at the end. <laughs> some of your best friends sent something oh, really good. Oh yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. <laughs> we are going to only ask at least the ones that we can use on like yeah, yeah. this time of the day, you yeah. know? Otherwise it's censored. <laughs> But the other ones will be good. You can share to you after. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan, I know you, I don't know, four or five years. Probably, or, yeah, maybe or more. More even. Yeah. more even. That's a long time. And um, tell me, I know that you are a really good photographer and really good videographer. What was your inspiration? I don't know. See, I don't... I don't consider myself like a skilled videographer and photographer by any means. I, I think because... I'm <laughs> lying. This is like I never had any formal study in photography or videography okay. or anything like that. Like everything I've learned is off YouTube and trial and error and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. It's how I got into it was when I back in the day when I used to race or do motocross, freestyle motocross. I wasn't very good at that. So I was a lot of time injured. And every time I got injured, I still wanted to be involved. So I'd bring my camera out, my GoPro back then, and I'd like duct tape it to someone's boot just to try these cool shots. And then from there kind of gave birth to the passion of like making videos and getting shots. And then it kind of progressed. And then as I got older and sold my motorbike, I, you know, progressed through that way and started to fall in love with the ocean and things like that. So mm -hmm. I think that's where my first inspiration from it came was wanting to be involved in something that I couldn't participate okay. in. So I wanted to capture it. So everything starts when you are in the wheelchair yeah. with your GoPro, yeah. trying to find everyone. That yeah. was the first gimbal. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's where, that's where it first started for me. Yeah. And I, I think that that's really interesting. I don't think everyone knows this past that you nah, have. Nah, right? that, that was... Can you days. tell me about it? What was the challenge, everything that you have on that time? I don't know. It's... As every young kid did, does, I had a, got a motorbike when I was young and progressed from riding and I just wanted to do more and more and uh, you know, you start doing little jumps and then you start hanging out with the guys who do bigger jumps and eventually <laughs> I was jumping ramps and doing tricks and yeah, it just didn't work out sometimes. <laughs> I, mean, I did that for probably five years, it wasn't, wasn't that good but I just got sick of spending so much time in the hospital and recovering and that and then that's uh -huh. when kind of the passion for video and photo came about because I only picked up my first camera when I was 22, 23. Oh, wow. Like, so, and people think I've been doing it my whole life, but I haven't, haven't really, you know. I, my first camera was a Hero 2, maybe. Okay. And I had, I only had GoPros up until I was like 25, I think. I bought my full, my first G85 Panasonic. Oh, wow. So, like, not long a time ago. Yeah. So, like, I'm 31 now, so that's only six, seven wow. years. And, you know, and so it's not something I've been doing forever. Uh -huh. And it's, yeah, it's, I know that you said that you were sick to be on the hospital, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are the memorable time uh, that you see, oh, I almost get fucked enough. Uh, there's, there's been quite a few, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> probably the worst one was probably when I was, how old was I? I would have been maybe 18. And I just got some new suspension on my dirt bike. And I, brand new suspension. Um, And like the standard distance you jump in freestyle is like 75 foot. Jesus so Christ. That's, and that's just standard. That's and you just do that every day. Um, and I got brand new suspension and then we went out to my mate's house off um, Thomas Road. And everyone was there, everyone was riding. And I was like a bit nervous to say, oh, can we push the ramp in so I can get used to my new suspension? So I was like, oh, I'll be fine. I'll just jump 75 foot. 
And I remember I come up to it, did a couple of run bys, and then the third time I just said, I'm just going to go for it. I jumped, and my new suspension wasn't set up properly, and it kind of went nose down. And I just remember looking over the handbars at the floor, and then I don't remember anything. And then I wake up with an ambulance officer holding my head. I lift my arm up, and it's just like a giant S shape. It's like, <laughs> Jesus yeah, Christ. I think I broke my right wrist in like 17 or 18 places. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and then I went to the hospital. And they had to, it was dislocated as well, so they had to put it back in. How old were you? How old was I? Yeah. Probably like 18. And then my mum was at the hospital and she was Super crying. Happy. And then they gave me ketamine to put it back in and I was all... <laughs> Jesus. I was out of it and then I kind of damaged my hip and that as well. And then I remember getting home and then for like the next two weeks, my mum had to shower me in the shower because I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. So I'm sitting in a plastic chair in the shower. Oh, my mum's washing me I'm just thinking to myself, yeah, I'm not sure if I want to do this, <laughs> do this much longer. So that was your last time? That wasn't the last one. So I, I ended up riding more. <laughs> of course. <laughs> riding more and then I had another crash and I snapped my ACL. And then I come back off that and then I thought, I thought, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to give it up. Yeah. And then I met Sarah and she kind of, she, oh. she enjoyed coming to watch me, but I just thought, yeah, I don't want to keep doing this for the rest of my life. So that's when I kind of decided, I think I was like 21. Okay. Decided to give it up. So she, she was the one responsible to you. <laughs> no, Thank she you. actually enjoyed me doing it. She enjoyed coming to watch. Oh boy. Yeah. So. So then, that's when I started doing stuff like that. And after, when you finish, I, I would say after you finish like a uh, motorbike, mm. you start to be a photographer and yeah, videographer. Yeah, that, that kind of filled the void a little bit, you know, and I'd go out and watch my mates ride. Some of them still ride today and they're, you know, professional. Mm -hmm. When you say that filled the void, what do you mean just, specifically? Just something, something to do, you know, like I'm someone who always likes to keep busy, to uh -huh. learn, to do new things. And that was something that was brand new to me and I was learning heaps and uh -huh. really enjoying it. So I just continued, continued down that, that route. It's, it's not something I've always wanted to do, you know, like when I was young, I didn't say like, oh, uh -huh. I want to be a photographer. I want to, everyone likes taking pictures, but I never, ever thought that I'd be doing it like as a job. <laughs> like that just blew my mind to, to not go to university just for something and to be able to do it full time. It feels like wrong. You know what I mean? Because you're like brought up, you're brought up thinking you have to go to university or get a trade and then that's it for the rest of your life. And I was like, man, I don't want to do that. You break the pattern, yeah, yeah, like I've been a refrigeration mechanic before I was did this full time for like 10 years. I hate uh -huh. every second of it. First day of my apprenticeship, really? I was like, oh, wow. man, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life, you know? So I use that as the motivation to, to chase things that I enjoy doing. And uh -huh. that's what I think gave me like the drive to make sure it was going to work. Like uh -huh. that in the back of your mind saying, man, if this doesn't work, you're going to be back fixing air cons on a 40 degree day. I was like, I'm going to do anything I can. To <laughs> <laughs> let's do something that's better. Yeah, yeah. Let's be, oh, to be honest, let, let's do something on the water, right? Because you love to do yeah. on the water stuff, yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Before we dive on, literally dive yeah, on, the, yeah. on the water, you said that you yourself taught, right? Mm. What was the main thing that you used it to learn and what, gives you who was your main inspiration as well uh, i don't know i don't know if there's like people that are my inspiration. there's a lot of people that i enjoyed watching the videos and stuff like that but yeah i i learned everything i know off youtube that's 100 okay. percent honest. youtube and like other people that you hang out with kind because of, because i was the only one in my friend group that was really doing it like uh -huh. i didn't have that like everyone's going out for a shoot like i was kind of by myself so everything i did learn was off YouTube and things like that. And I reckon that's a, one of the best learning resources in the world, honestly. Like, that's absolutely the, incredible. Like, the best university are you talking it about? It is. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's just like... It's the university of life. Yeah, right? like YouTube is just has everything on there and you want to find out how to do something. And a lot of it was trial and error. Like, you know, you try something, it doesn't work and then you try it next time. And there's plenty of times where you stuff up and, you know, you learn from that. But it's uh -huh. probably, it's a long process, but I'm glad I did it that way because I think it forms more of your own style uh -huh. rather than like you falling into the root of what someone else wants or someone else is doing kind of uh -huh. thing. So you have like a lot of content, but you can pick what you think is better and start to do what you think yeah. is good for. Yeah, like I, I, I really love that travel kind of content, like uh -huh. telling a story. Like I've never really considered myself a photographer. I think photography is like something I did on the side, like just to for fun you are a digital content creator yeah just just video <laughs> video was the main thing i just loved how you could tell a story through a video and invoke emotions in people uh -huh. like i just never could do that with a photo like uh -huh. well, i never could see see that in a photo to be honest but 
Yeah, I remember um, when I start to pay attention o, o about what you have done before and what we were doing, mm -hmm. I saw so many videos that you created and all the transitions, everything was amazing. Yeah. It blew my mind. I said, oh, yeah. what is this guy doing? Yeah, I think the main, like everyone else probably that does videos, like Sam Calder, who obviously is the, uh -huh. the god at doing that, he's the one that sparked that interest in me. You know, you oh, see really? one of his videos and you go, that was awesome. You know, he was... He's five years ahead of everyone else. Like uh -huh. what he was doing five years ago, people only just starting to do today. Yeah. So just like everyone else, like he is a god, and he's probably what sparked me into wanting to do those transitions. Uh huh. So yeah, that's. that's and, it. and and it's funny you say that. Um, if you look, his first videos, everything. Yeah. Was okay. Yeah. He's but, not so engaging that is now. I think he learned yeah, so much. He he's, grew. He's super. He's super kind cool. of a. He's, a god. he's not a god, he but is, he's it's kind of god really, now, right? He's like an innovator, a really good innovator. He's really good. In that, yeah, so that's kind of probably where, what sparked my interest in those kinds of videos. Uh -huh. But I think just like everyone, you kind of go through a bit of a bit of a process. And I went through that phase where I love doing transitions and that. But now I, I'm more focused on the on the storytelling Tell the story. kind of side. And especially now, it's not my full-time job anymore. Okay. I, I can really just focus on the passion uh -huh. projects and things that I'm really passionate about rather than just doing things to pay the bills, which it's kind of put that spark back into me again, you know, which is good, <laughs> which is good. Good. But so let's think about it from dirt bikes to underwater. Yeah, that, that was what, what how you can do this I'll, transition. I'll tell you a story that will blow your mind that no one else knows. Like no one. Wait, guys, no one. Do you have anything that you can stop and say, hey, so and it, it's just, if, the reason I'll tell you is because everyone assumes that oh, I grew up in the ocean. and I just loved it from birth. Okay, but, uh, uh, it's uh, not. Nah, like I used to surf, so I've surfed, but uh -huh. I never dived or anything like that until I met Sarah. So no, I'll, I'll tell no, you the story. No way, no way. I'll tell you the story. Okay. So I was probably, I don't know, man, I would have been 20, probably 21 or 22 maybe when I met her. Uh -huh. and she lived in Coral Bay, so she was a whale shark guide in Coral Bay. Oh my God. I'd never been snorkeling in my life. So I go up and meet her. Cause she's a, you know, I met her, she's, I met her when she was down here. So I went up and saw her in Coral Bay and I was trying to impress her as everyone always does. So she's like, let's go snorkeling. I was like, yeah, all right, let's go, let's go snorkeling. I was like, this should be fine. Then we go to this spot in Coral Bay, which is like billion and snorkeling. And she goes, oh, we're just going to snorkel up there. Probably like hundred meters and snorkel back. And I was like, no way I'm going to get eaten by a shark. Like there's no way I'm going to do that. No uh -huh. way. And she goes, what's wrong with this guy? Like this. <laughs> I've never been snorkeling before, mate. This is like when I was 23, 22. You so, kidding? So then I, she gives me the mask. I put the mask on and I just, I'm standing in waist deep water, putting my face in the water. And she's like, what is this guy doing? Anyway, I was like, man, I can't. I've got to impress this guy. I'm going to have to get in the water. <laughs> so I, she starts swimming off and I'm swimming like on next to her. Cause I'm like, I'm going to get eaten by a shark. It's only like two meters deep. <laughs> I was next to her like that and she kissed and looking at me like, is this guy all right? Like, what's he doing? She's obviously an avid swimmer because uh -huh. she lived up there. Uh -huh. Anyway, we went out, got back. I didn't get eaten by a shark. And then from that day on, I was like, mate, this is like the best thing ever. And that's that's when I started my that's love for the ocean. your passion. Everything. There you go. Boom. Seriously. Eight, seven I didn't years ago. Know about exactly that. right. That's and a breaking news. Yeah, and everyone thinks that I just grew up in the water. And like, yeah, I spent time in the water. And that, that's actually, that's Cole Bowman right there. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, oh, he's, he's that's on the him. photo. Yeah, that's me taking the photo of him. Oh yeah, I can, I can recognize the tattoos. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then it progressed to doing things like that, which I never thought in my wildest dreams. But it, I like telling that story to people because it goes to show you don't have to grow up doing something to, uh -huh. to for it to be a massive part of your life. Like the ocean is probably the biggest thing in my life right now, really? and I only found it. I, but even being a skipper, everything you learn after. Yeah, or? yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, like I got my boat license in school, but I never had a boat until 2018. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, man. And everyone thinks that I spent all this time and I didn't. I just, Sarah introduced me to it. I fell in love with it. And then I just progressed and progressed and progressed. And now it's just like my absolute favorite thing in the world. So I pretty much changed your life. Mate, big time. Big time. She honestly did. She honestly and she's did. still yeah. changing her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, she honestly did. And now it's like, just goes to show you don't have to do something for your whole life to like, for it to be a massive part. Like a lot of people, as I said, think I just grew up in the ocean when I didn't. I didn't yeah, you, because you're so natural, yeah. everything that I've seen, yeah. it's, oh yeah, it's yeah. another day for him. Exactly, man. yeah. And a lot of people don't realize that I only found that, you know, a few years ago when Sarah introduced me. And I was, mate, I'm telling you, I was petrified. You petrified, yeah. Me? Like I used to be all right surfing, but snorkeling, I was like petrified. Like I'm gonna get eaten by a shark. 
I can't believe yeah, you exactly. Has. No one can believe it. I know no, it's, it's that's wild. amazing. It's Thanks wild. for sharing that. No, nah, and it's like you know, you're a little bit embarrassed about it, but then at the end of the day, I'm not because now I look, at, I love it so much. <laughs> it's a massive part of my life. Um, being like a ocean lover now, right? You a guy that it's kind of in your blood. It yeah. looks like. Yeah. What are if you can share with us like two moments, one that you say, oh, that's the best moment that I can share with you that I have on the ocean. Yeah. And what was the scariest one that you could say, yeah. or oh, something like a shark or... Yeah. So the best moment would have to be when I was doing a job for a whale swim company in Tonga uh -huh. for humpback, that do humpback whale swims. And we're out one day, uh, and it was in the afternoon, the sun was like kind of setting, but it was like real nice light underwater. And we come across this mother that was sleeping like fully vertical in the water column. So we're waiting about 10, 15 meters away from her, just watching her sleep. And then she'd wake up, take a few breaths and then sleep. And she had a tiny little calf. And every time the mum come up for a breath, the calf would get a bit more confident and come round and then go back. And then a bit more confident. And then on like the fourth time the mum come up for a breath, the mum went back to sleep, the baby come right up and went upside down in the water column and held its fins out about from me to you away and just stared at us and our guide for like five minutes and we were just like in awe and then it turned on us on, turned back and then like wanted to play with us so it kind of swam through and knocked us all about that <laughs> swam back to mum and then <laughs> mum woke up and went no, I'm not having any of this and come by and just put her peck fin out just to say you know keep your distance from a baby and then they carried off and I was just like <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've got, I've got the GoPro video of it as well. You got it's, it? It's insane, mate. Wait, guys, you're going to see that. <laughs> I hope you can watch this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. It. It's insane. <laughs> That's probably the best, the best memory one in the ocean ever. And it's just like, yeah, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible. That whole time in Tonga was just... Perfect. Oh, it's just insane. Like, we were, we were living on this island away from... We were living on like a local island, there's only local villages and just us. Oh, that's amazing. And you're sleeping in tents, you're eating whatever fish you catch and whatever fruit you can find in the forest. Like it's full eco camping and it was just like you felt like you're part of it. It was just incredible. Unbelievable. Yeah, and unfortunately that all got destroyed in that Tongan volcano that erupted. Oh, absolutely wiped kidding. it all out. Yeah, everything got absolutely destroyed, which is pretty heartbreaking. They still do run swims uh -huh. um, off their cat. But, but unfortunately, yeah, all the all the tents and that. But all the pe out. the people that you met over there, they are okay. they're all right. They're okay. in New Zealand because they had to go to New Zealand on the off season. But um, but yeah, all their stuff was just completely wiped out. Yeah, it's pretty sad. But at least you have like a yeah memorable yeah, and that's there. probably the uh, yeah my most fond memory of the ocean. I'd have to say yeah. Amazing yeah, man, for sure. That's incredible. Yeah, no, it was, it was <laughs> one for the history books. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me, what was your scariest time? Uh, I was swimming with one of them, believe it or not. Another time Sarah <laughs> held me out. <laughs> so we we're up in Coral Bay. You're talking about sharks? Yeah, big, a big four meter tiger shark, yeah. Jesus so, Christ. So we were in Coral Bay and we launched the tinny and went to the spot where we normally find them. And straight away I put the drone up and we saw this massive shark, four meters, big female. And Sarah goes, yeah, let's swim with that. And I was like, uh, I was still pretty new. So I was like, let's just, <laughs> let's just take baby steps but she was oh, like no nah, 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 let's swim with it let's swim with it so anyway I was driving the boat she just wanted to get in first so we drove over to it hung around with it a little bit make sure it was like nice and chill uh -huh. Sarah slid in and was swimming behind it for quite a while uh, dived down and she gets out and she's just like you have to get in Dylan you have to get in and I was like oh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not sure I want to she goes you have to you have to it'll change your life and I was like like that's a big shark like even today Sharks of that size still have a presence about them. Like it's, you have to respect them. Like I know a lot of people on social media these days are trying to make them out like they're puppy dogs and you can pat them and they're not, they're apex predators. And Jesus Christ. Yeah, like they're not to be messed around with and to be taken. You need to know what you're doing. So that's why I was very hesitant in getting in. But anyway, she convinced me to sit on the back step and put my face in the water while she was driving. So she pulled up next to it, I sat on the back side and put my face in the water and lifted my face out. I'll tell you right now, it wasn't the length of it, it was the width of how wide this, this shark would have been. Oh boy. Like open its mouth, you go down without touching it. It was like, whew, the hairs on your neck stand up and I was like, that was enough for me. She goes, come on, just hold, hold, slip off and hold on to the ladder and no. I'll drag you for a little bit. Anyway, I was like, all right, I'll do it for, I'll do it for 10 seconds. So I slid in, held onto the ladder on the back of the boat and just putted and just looked at it. and. It obviously didn't care about me. It was just graciously carrying on about its day. Uh -huh. And that kind of like 
it was the most scary moment probably I was had in the ocean, but it was also most, the most life changing kind of thing, you know, like, gotcha. that was a big barrier for me. I mean, what do you think was the scariest one? Because it was kind of, you start to learn and yeah, everything but it was, was it's new. It's scary because everything you think about sharks that I thought before I spent time in the ocean was uh -huh, wrong. Uh -huh. So all these things you think like if there's a shark in the air, it's going to attack you. They're like, that's wrong. And then like, when you spend time with them, you find out they're not like that uh -huh. all the time. It's, uh -huh. it's kind of like a bit of a wake up call. And that was a massive barrier for me to get a bit more confidence in the ocean. I've spending that time and like calming me down a little bit. Like I, I was a lot more confident in the ocean and it definitely progressed my ocean career. That's incredible, that stage. man. Yeah. yeah, it was wild, man. <laughs> it was wild. Um, it was wild. Dilla, you, you born here in Perth, right? <clears throat> Sorry. If you're born here in Perth, um, what do you think was the influence of this place here? Because I don't know if everyone that's watching here today yeah. know where Perth is yeah. because you are so isolated from everything, yeah. right? But um, our coast, Western Australia coast is very unbelievable. Yeah, very All lucky. the places that you're talking about, like Coral Bay, yeah, XML, Mingalu yeah. Reef, Exmouth, they, they are amazing, yeah, right? Yeah, very spoiled. But living here in Perth, do you think after you discover this ocean, what, what do you think this area have influenced you to be a, I don't know, better diver or yeah. better explorer or... I think just any in Australia in general, we're so lucky to have, you know, all these best beaches and warm water. It's kind of like a, I don't know, just being Australian, you spend a lot of time around uh -huh. the ocean and with the ocean. So, of, which think. means you prefer yeah. north. Yeah. <laughs> north. North in the winter, south in the summer. No, um, West Australia is not south. Uh, yeah, yeah, but like, I don't know, it's, we're very spoiled here in Australia and it's, it's hard, you kind of don't take it for granted, but then you get someone who comes from another country and they just like, cannot believe it and you're like it blew their mind yeah you're like actually wow we are very very lucky to live in a place like this and it's being so isolated like you don't have to travel far to get a quiet beach and you know it's not totally and absolutely no packed there. yeah yeah so i think living in perth definitely helped i would say <laughs> <laughs> that's good um and looking for your underwater work mm. like i think i don't know if you have i can say in that way but Imagine you with your camera taking pictures, have the whole place for you. Because I, I don't know if that's the feeling that I have every time that I dive, mm. it's kind of you are in a different world. Yeah. Like you definitely, are definitely. only you, you just need to be aware of what's coming, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, it's you there and you have your camera. Do you think in that moment that you are capturing everything is something that can touch you, if I can say in that way? spiritually speaking like that moment or something yeah that connects you with the yeah, ocean yeah not necessarily taking the photo but being in the ocean definitely is like a giant reset for me uh -huh. um it's helped me out in a lot of you know times in your life where things get hard like it's always been an escape you can dive under the water and it's just you know like uh -huh. I like the way that you said about reset. If you think about it, the way that you are talking. So you came from dirt bikes, <laughs> underwater, and you are firefighter. <laughs> so it's kind of reset. Yeah, could be, yeah, it's in the middle, yeah. <laughs> Talk about like this firefighter, how, how, really, I need to understand yeah. how that flows. Why, how do you, how, how come you can start to be a, a firefighter? Yeah, it's something I've wanted to do for a while. So Sarah's brother is a firefighter. Oh, really? And he, he's the one that started telling me Man, about the job. Man, that your life for yeah. sure. <laughs> Mate, I tell you, I tell you. <laughs> so um, he got me interested about the job. So he used to tell me, you know, his days at work. And I was like, mate, that sounds like awesome. Like, yeah, really engaged with the community, helping people, you know, and it's just really good on shift and things like that. And it kind of got me researching a bit more about it. And that's uh -huh. when I applied and it's it's a super hard selection process so they get about two and a half thousand applicants and i think they only take like 24 every year are you kidding yeah so i, I didn't get through in my first year and then in my second year i uh, got through and then you have to do like a six month incredibly intense school to okay. learn everything and then after that six months you're on the trucks you're on station are you kidding me yeah yeah i didn't know about that yes why do you think it's so uh, competitive and so hard for you to uh, be a firefighter it, Number one, it's like physically hard job. So you have to be able to perform okay. under extremely stressful circumstances. So you need to be like mentally sharp and physically strong. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a job that I suppose a lot of people want. It's a, it's, you get a lot of fulfillment from it. Like you okay. get a lot of back, a lot back from what you do. 
um, which is good. So and that, that's something I wanted to do and it's just really good work-life balance. So I work two days, two nights and then I have four days off. So it's like perfect family balance. And now I've got a daughter uh-huh. like spending a lot of time with her. It's just, yeah, it's just an incredibly rewarding job. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So the more I researched it, the more I fell in love with it. And then, you know, you find out the roster and you're like, I can still, mm-hmm. I can have the best of both worlds. I can have a job I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be doing, I can tell you right now, I'll do it for the rest of my life, 30, oh. 40 years. Really? I'll happily do it for. And then I can still do this stuff on the side. And, you know? and, and that's interesting because that's probably would be one of the questions that I'd like to ask you, which is having like this busy life and now you are dead, <laughs> right? And, um, the balance the work life yeah. leisure yeah. your wife yeah. your kid how you can manage that what what can what do you can do to have like this balance <sighs> like anyone that knows me knows i live a pretty hectic life like it's i'm um, full on i'm either full on or asleep that's my two, <laughs> my two things <laughs> everyone everyone knows that so it is a it is a balance you're right um luckily with Being a firefighter, like having those four days off, you know, I like to allocate at least one or two of them as me and Sarah spend time together uh, with Ellie, and then like I can fit in work and filming on the other other two days. Um, it, it does get hard, and it definitely is a continuous work, but it's it's yeah, it's I enjoy being busy. Like if I'm not busy, I'm bored and then I'm distracted. I like I always like to be learning and doing something, and that's kind of what got me into flying FPV drones and that is because I was like bored. I was. You know, I wanted to learn something new, so I just got into that. And oh, so so you are doing uh, FPV drone pilot as well? Yeah, not qualified, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm, how, good at, I'm good at crashing them. <laughs> how come you start to do uh, and fly FPV drones now? So I saw a couple of videos and I was like, that looks awesome. And then being On me, YouTube. being me, being <laughs> me, being me, I didn't do any research and I just bought a drone and a controller and then I realized wait, you can't fly this like a Mavic. And I was just like, I've already spent all this money, I have to learn. So I bought a simulator, spent like 40 hours on the simulator, crashed my first drone in the ocean, crashed my second drone in the ocean, broke my third drone, so I had to learn how to fix it. And then finally, <laughs> I can somewhat fly them these days. <laughs> You're still flying or? Yeah, yeah, still fly every now and then, yeah. Not too much, but. And what, what was um, your main um, reason to choose like FPV instead of a normal drone just like more immersive i reckon and it's like with a normal drone you get good footage but with an fpv it's like more fun to fly okay like i find it way more fun and i fly with the guys who still ride freestyle motocross i fly around with them uh-huh. and that so yeah it's definitely more fun it's the only way for you to keep safe and yeah and to still get the rush yeah exactly <laughs> and right. you don't crash <laughs> yeah, exactly. you don't hurt yourself exactly, exactly. yes uh, being a drone pilot um what are the shots or things that you believe that change your photography um, experience or skills? What drone brought to you as a photographer? What drone? What, what, what? the capabilities, everything, or the skills, or yeah. um, the perspective? Yeah, that's a drone is like definitely something that you need to have in your repertoire if you want to be a videographer it just adds like so much to a video mm-hmm. like establishing shots and just different perspectives like definitely keeps people engaged um especially for wildlife i do a lot of wildlife in the ocean like whales and that and just you just cannot get that shot without a drone mm-hmm. unless you're in a helicopter but who has that money <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah you can definitely with what i do I, i'd have to have a drone i cannot not have a drone Because flying a drone, you, you, I'm pretty sure that you have like another memorable uh, moments, everything. Mm. What do you think, what was your key moment that flying the drone and say, oh, I captured this, I can't believe this. Yeah, so I'll, during the six months firefighter school, you get one week off in between. Uh-huh. One week off, that like, yeah, it's like a rest week. And in that one week, I went down south with Sarah. Um, and in that one week, we took the boat out off Dunsborough and I got that photo of the four blue whales all servicing at the one time along the coast like 100 meters offshore four. four at once yeah are you kidding me yeah and it like blew my mind like I was we were following for like three or four kilometers and I was trying to get them all up at the same time and it just wasn't happening and then like they were about to go around the cape and I was like oh we can't go around there because it's too rough and then at yeah, the last minute they just all four come up I think one's like half underwater but there's still you can see all four I can't believe yeah, it man. that was probably the most memorable I remember and then yeah the news got hold of it and the Guardian and yeah that's kind of oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. 
Yeah, that no was, one have to think about it. It was that. just luck, mate. Like people think I'm like super skilled with stuff like that. Honestly, it's luck. It's just, if you're there with a drone, you'll capture it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we were working together, you said, "I oh, mean, I have, I have to shoot one or at least one blue wave. Eh? Yeah, one blue wave, yeah. eh? and now the Sunday shoot four. Yeah, and I couldn't. Yeah, it was insane. I couldn't believe it. Eh? So it and crazy. and that uh, footage, like went all around the world yeah went viral. yeah it's a few people got it and the guardian wrote a story on it and seven news showed a thing on it and yeah it was a photo or a video uh there is a video so seven news showed the video but the guardian i think they use the video and the photo the uh -huh. photo is the main one i hope they, they pay you well eh? <laughs> 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 that was a new like a discovery and you mm -hmm. just for fun put just it my name just there like, yeah the one week i had off so it was good. It was good. It was really good. I, I needed it then as well because I was like super fatigued from the training and yeah, it was to good. work. After that, I'd come back in the next three months and I was ready to go. No, that was me clicking. Oh, sorry, man. I thought that was <laughs> I thought it was a whale. Blue whale. Oh, frankly, is like improving. Have like sound effects, everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ambient, ambient sound effects. It's on my Instagram if you want to see it. Yeah. The blue whale one. I can't remember where it is though. Somewhere there. Man, I haven't used Instagram in so long. I've, I'm a bit off Instagram. Man, I, me, just, me I'm neither, just over man. it. It's just, yeah, it's not what it used to be. You know, and you spend so much time on a video and it gets nothing. <coughs> and then I made a video, like a five second video of a dolphin jumping through a wave and it got like 35 million views and I got 80,000 followers from it. It's just, that just made me want to give up. Like. That's not what I'm about. It, it you know, doesn't make it, sense anymore. It, right? and I just, and it, that's kind of wanted to stop me creating, you know, and, and that's when I was like, yeah, I need to, I need to stop this because uh -huh. I'll, I don't want to just be putting stuff out because I feel like I have to. So that's why I, I'm not very active on so, there anymore, unfortunately. So you think all the, the, the social media, everything is completely different now? Oh, it's just, yeah, for, well, for me, for me, maybe for the younger creators, they, they, they like the way it's going, but... You're still young, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's just not what I'm in it for, you know, anymore kind uh -huh. of thing. Like, I really like to show my work there. But, um, yeah, it's definitely changed. Definitely changed. Maybe those are not the platforms anymore. Yeah, right? maybe not. Maybe I think it's changed too along. much. Yeah, maybe something new will come along. Okay. But who knows? <laughs> I hope not, man. There will be another <laughs> one for you to manage. Exactly. <laughs> and um, you has like, you mentioned that like the young people that are coming and man, you're still young, right? I am. I I'm am. not going to say that, but uh, <laughs> what would be your advice for people that are trying to, you have to give, you could give like the advice for many things, right? For people that wants to do like dirt bikes, <laughs> I couldn't underwater. Give advice, unless you want to break some bones, I wouldn't listen underwater. to So that's a good bikes. advice, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be underwater, yeah. being a firefighter or photographer, videographer. If you have to pick one, what would be one topic that you can say something for people that want to follow your career, follow your steps? I, I don't know. I just don't think I'm qualified to give <laughs> to give people tips. To be honest, I just feel yeah. I don't know. I'm just yeah. I, I'm a very driven person, very motivated when uh -huh. it comes to things that I want. And if I've got my mindset and saying I I really commit myself, so that's why I've gone the way I have with my life and that's why yeah I've done a lot of things in my life but each thing I've been passionate about and uh -huh. followed you know with everything I've got um, yeah I don't know like my career into photography was hard like it definitely wasn't easy but going from a fridgy like I was doing it part time and then when I got made redundant I decided to take the step and do it full time uh -huh. and mate for like a year and a half I didn't make a cent like as in I was making money through the filming but I wasn't gaining any money in my bank account like I was losing money and I, that year and a half I was like because you're buying yeah, more like, equipment like, man am I going to be able to sustain this like yeah it's, I really love it but if it doesn't pay the bills at the end of the day that's that's what it, it needs to happen sense, yeah. so but I hung in there and it as slowly grew and grew and then I started met you and then started doing some stuff with you which helped out and then Scotty you know uh -huh. got me to do some stuff and then you started to see light at the end of the tunnel and then it started making money and then you'd like kind of have to pinch yourself every now and then and say man you're filming for money and when you used to fix aircons like two years ago like it's incredible <laughs> man like you have to pinch yourself because sometimes you've got a job you'd be like oh man this sucks like i'm out of school filming this assembly or whatever and you're like pinch like mate you could be in a roof changing an aircon fan motor like you gotta exactly. pinch yourself sometimes and you know and then sometimes i'd be in bali at a resort and you'd be filming you'd be like 
man, after this, I'm going to go out for a surf in Bali and I'm getting paid. Like, this is absolute. It feels illegal. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, yeah, it, it, definitely you have to pinch yourself at times, but uh-huh. it's definitely not easy. Like, if anyone thinks it's going to be easy, you can just quit your job and start filming. Definitely don't do it because it's, it's not it's not an easy thing. But if you're driven and you're motivated and you just network with people, like-minded people, it's definitely not off the cards. Uh-huh. And like, I'm not skilled or talented in my eyes at all. I just I just grind, watched YouTube. Uh-huh. If I wanted to edit a photo and it wasn't turning out, I'd find out how to do it and then I'd learn it for next time. Like, it probably took me a lot longer than most people, but I got there in the end and people liked my work and yeah, that's yeah, kind of, that's kind that's of what's important. where it went. Yeah, man. So like. Don't think you have to be skilled or you go to uni or anyone can learn anything in, in my eyes. Exactly. Yeah, so. And uh, you said something that's really interesting perhaps, especially here in Perth, because like or not, everyone knows everyone, mm. right? And um, and you mentioned about network. Yeah. What do you do to keep your network here in Perth or maybe WA? Uh, with filming, just helping people out when they ask for help. Like sometimes someone will be short and it won't really line up, but you like say, oh, look, look, I'll help you out this time. Or, or just put your name out there. Like, mate, I th- like something I did, I wanted to film in the Maldives. That was like one of my bucket list things, like uh-huh. film a resort in the Maldives. I'm not kidding you. I sat down and I sent emails to 185 resorts and I got one reply. Are you kidding? 100, it took me six months and I got one reply and I, it was really vague at that. And I worked on it and I worked on it. And then I went and filmed at a resort called Rethi Faru in the Maldives. Like, and that's the kind, that's kind of how my brain works, you know? Like, that's something I want to do. Like, oh, and Sarah wouldn't see me. I'd be in my office typing email and she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, you know, and it's, <laughs> that's the kind of, that's the kind of the way I, I work. And, you know, and, that, uh-huh. and it, people might, after the 100th email or the 184th email, be like, give up. Oh, really? But yeah, but like at 185, I sent an email and I got something back and we and built a relationship and I sent them. The hardest thing was I had nothing to show them. Like they'd be like, oh, what can gotcha. you make us? Yeah. You're like, well, I haven't been to the Maldives. <laughs> when I be in Maldives, what am I show to them? <laughs> but I worked on it, worked on it and I flew over there and I filmed my first resort in the Maldives and I went another time after that and it was just, yeah. It's like, oh, you went twice? I went twice, yeah. That's yeah. good. It was awesome. That's that's a really special. I got actually a couple of good friends early over uh-huh. there, which is awesome. They showed some local, local uh-huh. areas around there, which was which was really good. That's good. But um, but yeah, just definitely, there is a community in Perth, especially because uh-huh. being so small, everyone knows everyone. Um, so there's definitely no shortage of getting involved with uh-huh. the communities. So, and yeah. even when I first started off, like you can't ask for money for everything when you don't have a portfolio. Yeah. I did so many jobs for free just to build that portfolio. So think of not the value as in the money you're going to get paid, but think of the value of the content that you can then show saying, I made this because that is invaluable. Yeah. So 100%. like when I first started off, I when I'd have content of something, then I could charge. But if it was something you didn't have content of, you know, you could always do it for free, get mm-hmm. the content in your portfolio. And then from then on, you can charge. You can say, hey, this is what I can make. And that's, he's good. That, that's a massive, massive tip I wish I knew a lot earlier (laughs) that's good that's a really good tip for everyone that's starting and I think definitely yeah also know your worth but also know when you're first starting out you need a portfolio to it's hard to someone goes hey this is going to cost a thousand dollars I say what do I get for that and say oh well I haven't made one yet but it'll Uh, be good (laughs) exactly exactly and um you you mentioned that you are self-motivated or you are motivated all the time what keeps you motivated I wouldn't say I'm motivated all the time but I'm I am motivated. Yeah, I just, just, just I can't sit around like unless I'm playing Call of Duty. That's the only time I sit down. <laughs> but no, I can't. I can't sit around. Like I always love to learn and do like keep my brain busy learning. Like every day, doing something that betters me in a uh-huh. sense. Like I've had more than my fair share of days we just don't do nothing, and that's totally fine. Like it's not every single day. But, uh-huh. but just to, I just always like to grow and to learn. And when I'm not growing and learning, it's you know I'm not not enjoying myself kind of thing and when you say like learning you primarily are watching videos on youtube yeah, or there yeah, is like a book video, or anything, anything that you read like flying a pv learning how to fix them like learning how to shoot underwater learning you know how to dot free dive better like just listening to podcasts is a massive one like i rarely ever listen to the radio when i drive my car uh, it's always a podcast i hope um, we can listen to this one yeah maybe I will. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's one D has, do you know D has, you can listen to this one. You'll be good. <laughs> just, yeah, just, just always learn, you know, but then also know that yeah, you have to have your time to yourself as well, like for other people. Cause uh-huh. I, I'm probably could do that a little bit better is not always focus on me. Now I've got a family like, oh, all right, you have to relax and spend time with your family. And it's not always, you know, uh-huh. go, 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 which is something I struggle with. A lot of people think I have ADD. I reckon I have ADD as well. My mum had me tested, but she reckons it was <laughs> negative. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I reckon it's, I can get super hyper-focused on things and I reckon that's definitely helped me to be where I am today. Incredible, man. To a certain degree, yeah. And how you manage to um, see your friends as well? Because you're talking to your family, work, everything. Yeah, well, I hang out with, I'll hang out. The good thing is, like, the people on my shift at work, we all have the four days off together. Uh-huh. So, like, I can hang out with them outside of work and then I've got friends who love, like, Kyle, he's a fiery and he, we always go out on the boat together diving and that. So. Yeah, you always spend time with your friends. It's, it, it is, they are a massive part of who I am and where I am today, uh-huh. uh, being supported me through everything. So, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> That's when That's was the that? First day. That was my graduation. Oh, your first day? That's the day I graduated. That's at my nonna's house. Yeah. Oh, look at your smile. You say, oh, yeah, you did it. That's the day I graduated. <laughs> yeah, mate, that was a relief. I'll tell you that right now. It's, <laughs> it was, yeah, it was a long slog and I finally made it. Uh huh. That was good. And I can see like the house. Well, your name originally uh, from? It's Dutch. Yeah. So my dad's dad is from Holland. From but the house is all together or was it? Uh, D house. So D means the, and then house means hair. So like the rabbit. Uh, so it's the same like in Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. Similar. Similar. Yeah. We have these as well. So yeah, I, that's go. why I asked for you. He's not, but he's not all together. Nah, nah. D space H W A S. Yeah. Ah, yeah. so you change it here. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, there's me and Ellie at work. There we go. Yeah. And such how a you... good job. Such a good You just bring your kids in and show them the truck and it's just oh, such a family friendly job. I really love it, yeah. And I, 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 how often do you have to go out and try to, how you call, like someone call? So someone calls triple zero? Triple zero. And they'll say, do you need a fire ambulance or a um, police, uh-huh. and then they, if they say ambulance, it goes to St. John's. If they say fire, it goes to Coms End in Perth. Ah, okay. oh, sorry, over east, and then they find out where it is and stuff like that. If it's a going job, then they'll ring the bells at the station, and then you get up, you check with the job, you get a printout, hop in the trucks, and then and then go. Yeah. What was the the most interesting story that you can tell? Oh, I'm still so new. I'm still so fresh in the job. I've only don't know. I've been to a couple of good bushfires, a couple of good building fires there was a massive one down here my first night in the job where was it it was a fiberglass factory down near stock road uh-huh. first night in the job so no I, way. I did my first two days it was my first night i was at hope valley fire station like a boy yeah I was, and i was just about <laughs> to get in the shower after the gym i got in the shower and then the bells went ding so i had to quickly get changed ran out and then we pulled out of the driveway and i just remember looking at the distance it was just this massive, massive. plume of smoke and then they on the radio they're like oh dylan looks like you're gonna get your first real job and then i reckon i got there and i was just like my eyes were just super wild. i was like whoa this whole place on the fire there was cops everywhere and then i was the second team in ba like breathing apparatus to go uh-huh. in and then me and my justin who was with me went down the side and there was gas cylinders exploding mate i was like Jesus was, Christ! Man. It was full on for my first first job, yeah, first wow. going job. So it was and, pretty and intense. Being a BA, what what do you have to do? So at that stage, the whole factory was fully involved, so there was no saving that. So we had to like protect all the other buildings around it to make uh-huh. sure. So that's oh, what we were okay. on. We were down the side protecting the buildings. Then the bush caught along on fire on the back, and then on that was on the train tracks, and then we had to go around there, and it was just yeah, it was a lot. I think we went out at seven a.m. We didn't get back oh. till six p.m. But but that was that was a memorable job. <laughs> my first one <laughs> and it, it looks like a kind of a family there as well it right? is it is you, you're living with these people you know so you do 12 hour days 14 hour nights so you you live and live there you, you, you basically sleep there and all the gym everything yeah gym that. and everything yeah check all the trucks every day yeah yeah it's it's, it's an awesome job i love it i absolutely <laughs> I, honestly i absolutely love it it's such a good job but i'm um, talking about friends mm. frank wait i think we have like some oh no questions no. from D has friends, yeah, right? Probably, I probably, they're probably friends from here. D has, I don't know if you met Franco before. He's oh, yeah, our. I've seen all his work. I've seen all his work. Yeah, he's our 
I am operator. Operator. I'm DJ. <laughs> DJ Franco. <laughs> he, he does everything, man. He's a super talented guy. Yeah, he is. He is I'm he so lucky to have him. And you won an FHB. But I am not the interviewee today, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and he's humble as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you so much. Um, yeah, we have a few. Do you feel a connection with the sea life you capture on camera? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, one thing the ocean has done for me is like you spend a lot of time in the ocean you realize how vulnerable it is and how it needs to be protected so it's definitely helped me try and conserve it a little bit more you know what I mean you don't really see it's hard if you don't spend time in the ocean you don't realize how special it is yeah you know what I mean that I was one of those people yeah. like as, as you heard before I didn't really spend a lot of time in the ocean then the more time you spend the more you realize how vulnerable it is and how susceptible it is to pollution and things like that. So it definitely helped spark that side of me to try and better myself to protect it. Mm -hmm. um, but with the certain animals, definitely. Like there's sea lions I swim with, dolphins I swim with that you wow. definitely build a connection with. It's so good. Um, yeah, especially... Uh, the, the same guy say, don't you think you are a little tall to be a skipper? <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on the, the, the ding as well. <laughs> I don't know. I am tall. I am tall. I'm six, six foot five, so I am pretty Jeez. tall. That's probably why I was no good at riding six a motorbike. Six foot five, how, how? 198 centimeters, yeah. Jesus, man, yeah, so you're I'm... fucking tall. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, people from Holland, from the Netherlands, are tall, so that's where I get it from. Oh, okay, cool. But, wow. yeah. yeah, so over there, I'm normal height, but here I am tall, so. But is your dad tall as well? No, not really. <laughs> I think he, he's, he's, six the gym. Foot. he's six foot, but to me, he's like, oh, he's, I suppose he's kind of tall. <laughs> Too much but my brother, he's not tall. My sister is kind of tall, but yeah, definitely not tall like me, freakishly tall. <laughs> <laughs> One, like maybe nerd question, but it says related with the, with the ocean. Why does the blue whale migration go down to, to the south coast of WA? Yeah, so I'm not an expert on it. <laughs> you have good friends, yeah, hey? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty specific, but right? As far as I'm aware, they come up uh, to feed it around Indonesia and around those areas. Uh -huh. And then in the winter, they come down past the Cape to Antarctica to feed. In the summer, sorry. Okay. They feed down in Antarctica in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that's they usually carve up in the winter. And then as they come down the coast with their new cars, that's why they're coming closer to protect. And then once they get past the Cape, they go straight to Antarctica. So it is pretty rare to see like a blue whale 150 meters off the shore like it's crazy yeah it's crazy to see so. only you has yeah <laughs> lucky lucky okay. and other ones say where did you get your nickname shamu the hands oh. from <laughs> <laughs> so this was this that, is, that one we have to oh put on man. the screen because that's that's oh good oh man so i know who that would have come from <laughs> i know who that would have come from so when I was going through firefighter school, um, so my name was originally Shamu, who I'm not sure if you're aware is that killer whale in captivity over in America. Are you kidding me, right? Yeah, so like just a whale because I went and filmed those blue whales on my week off and then it made the news. So when I come back, they were all just teasing me. So oh, they gave me the name Shamu. So that's how it started. Because uh, the blue whale. That's, that's how it started, so I was Shamu. And then part of the firefighting, like you're learning, you have to learn how to drive under emergency conditions because uh -huh. obviously when you're going to a job, your lights and sirens. So they take you down to this racetrack in Collie and you have to go through all these cones and do all this stuff. Anyway, because I've big, I got big hands and I'm sitting in a car and I was trying to turn and I was turning the indicators on, I was turning the fly windscreen wipers on. They just come up with the name to hands and then it was just Shamu to hands and it's just kind of stuck, unfortunately. And that's what I'm kind of known as from now. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say you're gonna kill some cones as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it was yeah. I had it all. I had the lights going and the windscreen wipers, and yeah. And then from that day on, that's they kind of added the two together, and that's how I got my name. <laughs> and it's another one would say, what is in your scone kit? Scone? Scone? My scone, scone kit. kit. Scone kit. Oh, <laughs> that's another fire-related question. So on the station, as like the new the new guy, you have to make scones. Oh, really? Yeah, and apparently you're meant to take around the scone kit to all the stations you go to to make scones, but I'm just, I tell them, I say, you either want me to buy a good cake or you can have bad scones because I'm terrible at cooking. So oh, I've always just gone the cake option. Just because they don't know what is big balls, <laughs> <laughs> big ball <Yeah>. means. Eh? <laughs> 
I tried the pasta ball. Have you tried? The pasta ball. With them? The, did they know about it? The pasta? Yeah. Nah, nah I have, I've cooked Guys, the pasta. I've if cooked. you are a friend of this guy, <laughs> ask them to cook the pasta. Have, You're never going to ask for his corn anymore. I cooked it once. I can't remember what station. It might have been Mandra. I cooked it once for the, and they enjoyed it. Yeah. Actually, I did cook it for Coburn. I cooked it for Coburn Fire Station. For really? Shift. Yeah, it was really good. Oh man, that, that mega bowl, mega bowl, that's mega it. bowl, that's mega bowl. Mega bowl. Hey, that that's was it. the best was pasta good. ever, that man. Was a good day. How many weak wins can he put down in one sitting? <laughs> that's the last one. It's another one. So that's another one. At when we we're at recruit school, um, I was telling him I was like, mate, I could eat it because it's pretty intense. Um, during BA week, you have to practice wearing BA and go into this tower and drag out all these 90 kilo dummies. And I made a thing of saying, like, I bet you I could eat Wicked Wings and do this. And they're like, no, you wouldn't. So one day I went and bought 10 Wicked Wings and ate them. It was, it was a mistake. Jesus. <laughs> and then we were in the bat building and I was, like, probably that close to, to chucking up. But <laughs> Really? <Yeah>. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> cool. There's one question of one of your friends, which I think makes sense. And uh, I would like to understand that mm. as well. Because who knows you, you always are smiling happy <laughs> never i never see you grumpy yeah um, sarah would think different yeah <laughs> till when are you gonna have these and do you got like i don't know frustrated sometimes or yeah. scared sometimes yeah, for, or... Sure. for sure man like this i get when there's something that i want to do and i can't do it i, I get it really gets to me like when i want to like fix something or learn something and uh -huh. i'm not picking it up straight away that kind of gets to me. I'm someone who likes to be able to do things, you know. But it don't show that to anyone, yeah, right? Yeah, that is true. That is true. I, I just don't like to put that kind of negative energy out there, you know. Like, uh -huh. I, yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, it's a hard one because I do. I'm just like everyone. Like, I have down days and I have up days, and it's just just all part of life. But I think I'm just in such a good spot, like with my career and with my filming and my new daughter. Like, like what else, honestly, could you want? Like in life, you know what I mean? Like I'm just so happy with where I am today and where what I've achieved. Like every time I'm feeling down, you like I pinch myself and say, mate, you got your dream job, your dream wife, you got a beautiful daughter. Like honestly, what is there to complain about? And that kind of like snaps you, snaps you out of it a little bit. Cause mm -hmm. it's just like everyone get, get angry with small little things, you know? But just, you just gotta really pinch yourself and think about what you do have. You know, because I've been through some down places in my life, that's for sure. Uh -huh. um, but it's just, you really got to just focus, focus on, on what you what you want. And yeah, yeah, it's, it's I, know, I know everyone thinks I'm always happy and always that, but I'm just like every other person, honestly. Like, cool, man. Have your, have your down days, but just keeping busy is a big thing for me. I that's beautiful. Busy mind, you haven't got time to think about other things, so... That's beautiful, man. Thanks for sharing. That's nah, that's no really good. No worries at all. <laughs> Dylan, I couldn't thank you more to being part of this podcast today. I, I'm really happy to have you here. Yeah, and really appreciate um, it. All the stories, everything that yeah, you talk it's, about. It's, it. it's the first time. First time that everyone... Knew. A lot of people would be shocked, but I just wanted to be as honest as possible to show everyone that, you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it because I'm by no means talented. It's just just got to grind that's all it is that's yeah. a good advice man. yeah yeah thank you so much for being no part of the show and thank i you. hope we can i don't know <laughs> have another episode and talk about the blue rails <laughs> <laughs> we can go there shoot as well right? for sure, for sure. <laughs> dylan thank you so much no worries, man. i really appreciate everything thank hey thank you It was good, man. That was awesome. Uh, we didn't talk about it, but uh, I, I do remember as well the time that we um, went to Esperance and work over there. Yeah. I think we stayed like one week. One week, yeah. yeah. That Five was days. crazy Mate, that stuff. Was wild. That was the time that I showed to you that <laughs> I'm like, like I'm, generally I go to work and don't <laughs> have fun at all. <laughs> Because that time we have like hard drives that don't yeah. copy really fast yeah. and I have you to copy up everything. all night watching it like, oh man, you were Man, and, and we were shooting like, I don't know, six different cameras, oh, man, four drones, GoPros. I don't know how you did it. I don't know how you did it. But the end was amazing. Yeah, it was good. It was really good. It was good. 
mega ball. Oh, we did like two different projects, right? One was on uh, Esperance, the other one mm. was on Buston. Buston Jetty. Yeah, Buston Jetty. Yeah, I remember that one. We stayed now with Chad. Oh, there's another thing that we didn't talk about it. Your tattoo in your finger. <laughs> Just because you didn't do anything. <laughs> Tell me about it. What, what? Yeah, I had, to, I had to hide that when I was going through my interview because I always do this. And when I was going to interview from the fireys, I had to like make sure I held my hand because like, otherwise I'd do that. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what's the main reason why you did that? Just for fun? Just it looks funny, I reckon. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Thank you so much. Nah, thanks, Dylan. brother. Thanks, I really appreciate it, man. <laughs> Woo! Thanks, thanks, thanks. Thank you, sir. Wow.